This is Southern Cross News with Joe Palmer. Good evening, everyone. We begin with developing news tonight, a major biosecurity crisis. Fruit growers are facing a suspected incursion of fruit fly with a possible detection in Tasmania's northwest. A response is being mobilised in the face of a pest that could threaten tens of millions of dollars worth of exports. Late today, Biosecurity Tasmania revealed it's investigating suspected lava on apricots at a Sprayton residence. If confirmed, it would be the first time lava has ever been found in fruit grown on the Tasmanian mainland. It comes after detections in the past week on Flinders Island. Authorities say they're implementing surveillance and control actions focusing on eradication of the pest. Pressure is mounting on the Premier to reveal exactly what will happen in the event of a hung parliament following the March election. Political experts say Will Hodgman is backing himself into a corner with no option but to stand down if the Liberals fail to win majority. The Premier alongside a current mayor and minor party candidate threatening his chances at majority. It's a lot different to... To what it is currently. Now. Increasingly likely as the polls predict a hung parliament, the Jackie Lambie Network's Michael Kent says he'd negotiate with both major parties to form government if he manages to win a seat in Lyons. Well, as long as it was lunch and he paid, <laughs> I'd be happy. But the Premier's not keen to shout. Um, I'm not interested in uh, imagining coalitions, striking deals, that's what Labor are doing and they've done it before. A hung parliament offers three options for the Premier. Strike a deal with minor parties to help form a government, give Labor the opportunity to form a government in minority or step aside allowing him to keep his promise to voters with the Liberals forced to create a workable parliament. So, uh, you know, they really can't promise, make the promise that the whole of the Liberal Party will refuse to govern if uh, a minority government is the result. He's made a pledge to the people of Tasmania he'll govern in majority or not at all. That means if he doesn't win a majority, he's honour bound to resign as Premier. Pressure building on the Premier to reveal what's Plan B. We know they're thinking about it because they're pouring hundreds of thousands of dollars into an advertising scare campaign against multi-party government. There's been some speculation that they had a campaign that they wanted to run and they wanted it, they wanted to target back white. And with the polling date still unknown... With an election still a number of weeks away, I'll be using my time to explain to Tasmanians why we shouldn't go back. It's a campaign set to continue. Jacqueline Robson, Southern Cross News. Former Maverick MP Brenton Best has found an unlikely ally in a legal stoush with the Labor Party. Health Minister Michael Ferguson is demanding a full investigation into the case from the election watchdog after Mr Best claimed Labor was using it to stop him from running in the upcoming election. Brenton Best was no stranger to headlines during his political life and as he considers a parliamentary comeback, he's finding himself in the spotlight again. A lingering legal dispute with Labor over more than $3,000 in party dues, allegedly owed by Mr Best. But the former Braddon member says legal action has been timed to smear his name as the election looms. The decision to take action against me is only recent. I don't know, this party seems to be in absolute disarray, but... Um... You know, I can't speak on their behalf, but all I can say is that um, my legal advice is that I don't owe the Labor Party any money. Labor rejects the accusations of bullying made by Mr Best. All members of political parties are required to pay fees to their parties. And regardless of whether political or Mr Best interests are at heart, Michael Ferguson is in the former member's corner, requesting an investigation from the Electoral Commissioner, as Labor could be in breach of laws surrounding electoral intimidation. And under the law, uh, that's a very serious offence, punishable by jail. I'm more concerned that Minister Ferguson thinks that Brenton Best and his uh, issue with the Labor Party is more important than healthcare. Mr Best says the legal action began in November last year. Tom Johnson, Southern Cross News. Two Tasmanian processing plants will receive $12 million in a rare investment set to help more than 300 farmers across the state. The extra money into the Fonterra sites in Sprayton and Wynyard aims to boost milk processing and cheese production. Millions of dollars pouring into Tasmania set to benefit hundreds of dairy farmers. A move by milk processor Fonterra to increase dairy capacity. This investment today shows that Fonterra particularly 
has, uh, has invested in the future of Tasmania's dairy industry and I think that's really positive news. $9.7 million will go into Wynyard to increase cheese and milk production, while the Spraytson factory will receive $1.8 million to increase its lactose processing capacity. It's a great opportunity. It um, sends all the right messages to the dairy industry. We work closely with our farmers and, and uh, obviously they are critical to our existence. I think it gives us confidence that we can keep growing our milk and we've, we're in a growth phase ourselves so it gives us confidence that we can keep growing our milk and not have any restrictions. It comes after Fonterra cut the price it paid suppliers in 2016. I did find it difficult when they, when they cut the price a couple of years ago and they probably did lose a bit of face with farmers but I think this is a, a, and they're a sign that they're really trying to improve their image now and, and restore some of that faith that they lost. Obviously there's, there's been some difficult times in the dairy industry but this is, this is really positive and, uh, and it should give them some confidence that uh, we're, we're doing all the right things to make a sustainable business. Both Sprayton and Wynyard plans hire 180 full-time workers and more than 900 are employed indirectly. They say the expansion could see more jobs in the future. The flow-on effects are more milk, there are, um, the farmers expanding. We're well placed as a dairy industry, dairy um, state with our climate and irrigation schemes coming on board so it's fantastic for Tasmania. Works have already begun and are set to be complete by the end of the year. Read to Risk, Southern Cross News. A 24-year-old Tasmanian man has pleaded not guilty to attempted murder and aggravated armed robbery in relation to a serious assault in Waverley earlier this month. Corey Mitchell Gessler entered his plea in the Launceston Magistrates Court this afternoon and made no application for bail. He and four others have been charged over the matter where the alleged victim was reportedly found on the side of the road. Gessler will next appear in the Supreme Court on March 13. Tasmania is set to become a hub for commercial pilot training with new vet registered programs being offered through Paravion. Student loans are now available, meaning those dreaming of a career in aviation won't have to stump up large upfront costs. Taking to the skies over Cambridge for this young Paravion pilot, it's all in a day's work. It's absolutely wonderful. Uh, there's not a better place to fly in Australia as far as I'm concerned and uh, a great company to do it with uh, such a diverse role here, uh, so many opportunities. Par Avion's pilot training course attracted Nikita from Queensland. Here there are unique advantages, low air traffic, areas of uncontrolled airspace and challenging conditions. We have weather patterns that are pretty intense and you've you got to make smart decisions and that's part of flying and if you haven't been exposed to that sort of stuff that's a whole area of your flying that you haven't tested. We'll on. be teaching everything from this is how an aeroplane flies all the way up to uh, the similar kind of flying that your airlines will do, uh, obviously in smaller aircraft. But a major barrier for many budding pilots is cost, with the journey to a commercial licence around $80,000. Now Par Avion has been registered as a vet provider, meaning student loans can help fund this training. To consolidate the cost of that into a federal government um, loan, I think makes it much more achievable uh, for a student to start, whereas previously financially they wouldn't be able to do it. It's an expensive outlay, it is. It's, it is an expensive thing to want to do, um, but having that sort of option of course will make it much more available, much more possible for people. The company is hoping to train more than 100 people a year as demand soars and Australia faces a potential shortage of pilots. Don't underestimate the growth of the overseas nature. The, the airlines are coming here from overseas and recruiting and recruiting aggressively and I think money just talks and so pilots have been leaving Australia to go fly elsewhere which has led to a, a skills gap. Par Avion hopes to touch down at Devonport Airport as well, which could become its base for international pilot training. Michael Breen, Southern Cross News. Police say they've caught a man going 50 kilometres over the speed limit near Brighton. Officers were conducting speed checks on Tea Tree Road before sunrise this morning when they say they detected a man travelling at 110 kilometres an hour in a 60 zone. Police say the new Norfolk man had a suspended licence. His vehicle has been clamped and he'll appear in court at a later date. 
Tasmanians are being warned to take extra precautions in the heat, with extremely high temperatures predicted across the state over the coming days. The Public Health Service is reminding people to stay hydrated and remember the dangers of keeping children or dogs in hot cars. It's important that people um, keep an eye on their elderly neighbours and people who have um, underlying chronic conditions. It's important that um, people keep out of the sun as much as possible and avoid any physical activity during the hot part of, part of the day. Contact a health professional if you become unwell. Tasmania's east coast will soon enjoy a new tourist information hub to help guide visitors along the growing eastern trail. Triabunna will be home to the Visitor Experience Centre. Its current building set to undergo a $750,000 makeover, capitalising on the close proximity to Mariah Island. A model Island. which we believe will suit the ferry here to the Mariah Island as well. It will have a lounge for the visitors to spend their time in the lounge and going through the visitor centre. These are the sorts of fundamental things we can get right in Tassie, we can do it efficiently and, and obviously creating these connections in places like Tribuna is a really exciting opportunity to be able to set a, a set a platform for going forward. The East Coast recorded a 10% surge in visitor numbers last year. Local scientists have uncovered a new population of one of the world's rarest fish in Tasmanian waters. A citizen scientist spotted the rare creature, prompting IMAS crews to send off a search party. It's a peculiar looking creature, but don't expect to find one during a day at the beach. The red hand fish are one of the rarest fish in Australia and probably in the world. Scientists almost giving up on finding new populations until they were given a tip off of a sighting in southeast Tasmania with exact coordinates. We were, we were pretty ready to give up and so it was just by chance that um, yeah, I saw the end of a tail of a red hand fish hidden underneath some red algae and that was it. It's the needle in a haystack stuff so who knows how many other populations there, there may still be. The fish, around seven to nine centimetres, has special fins to walk along the sea floor rather than swim. A lure on top of their head that they use to attract um, food, so uh, they are very interesting and charismatic looking. They don't travel far, usually found within 50 metres of one another. You still have to search under every little piece of seaweed to find one individual. The only other known population is in Frederick Henry Bay here in Tasmania. Because of their rarity, scientists are keeping this new location close to their chest. It would be easy for eggs to be knocked off by people kicking around or even by boating. Urging anyone who is lucky enough to spot one to get in touch. Louise Hedger, Southern Cross News. Tasmanians are being urged to ditch disposable coffee cups and for their workplaces to provide reusable ones. Markets for Change pairing up with the Hobart City Council to promote a sustainable low waste coffee culture. We want as many uh, Tasmanian businesses as possible and uh, a big emphasis on businesses in the city of Hobart to come on board to be a cup conscious company. We'll help them. We provided 300 cups to our workforce at Cleary's Gates, our outside workforce. And that saves uh, 12,000 12, coffee uh, disposable cups going to landfill. The initiative forming part of the Council's Zero Waste by 2030 plan. Now let's take a look at the day's business and finance news with thanks to TASPLAN, your local super fund. The Australian share market has gained ground as demand for energy, healthcare and bank stocks offset the impact of weaker commodity prices on miners. The ASX 200 index has risen by 17.7 US points. A short time ago the Australian dollar was trading at 80.12 US cents and 65.03 Euro cents. Tasmania's under-14 basketballers are back home after their drought-breaking win in the Junior Basketball Country Cup. The team went undefeated in the seven-game tournament to take the crown for the first time in 33 years. 12-year-old Lachlan Brewer was the tournament's second highest scorer. Everyone was real happy and just proud, really. A bit emotional as well. That's a testament to the weekly programs that they do with us. We try to put them in situations where they can, can grow and succeed on the court. Basketball Tasmania sent nine teams to the tournament in Albury. The under-18 boys also performed well, returning home with silver. 
Good yeah. evening. Hobart and Burnie both 28 degrees today. Launceston recorded 27 and Devonport 24. 33 was the warmest at Fingal with most temperatures sitting between 2 and 5 above average. Cressy 32 degrees and Helens 29. Wynyard and Campania 28. Bushy Park and Friendly Beaches 26. Grove 25. Lowhead 23 today. Flinders Island 22. King Island and Strawn 21 degrees. There is cloud containing thunderstorms over eastern Victoria and south and western New South Wales. Monsoonal conditions prevail over the north, but the rest of the nation is under sunny skies. And so were we, mostly with just a little high cloud over the west and far south. Tomorrow, a weak ridge moves over Tasmania as the high sits out over the Tasman Sea, pushing a ridge up the east coast, the rest of the country under a broad area of low pressure. The winds southeast and northeast at 10 to 20 knots with inshore afternoon sea breezes, light and variable winds inland. Hobart. Bit of morning drizzle clearing, a top of 27 later in the day, 26 for Signet. Hot day for New Norfolk, 30 degrees with some morning drizzle as well. Hot, mostly sunny for Launceston, 30 at the top, 24 for Devonport. Bit of cloud for Campbelltown and warming up to 30 degrees. Burnie partly cloudy and 24, 25 for Strawn and Smithton, 24 degrees. For St Helens tomorrow, partly cloudy and 24. Early drizzle moving off from Swansea, 24 the top there and 29 for Fingal. UV. Extreme 11 all round. On to Friday now and fine apart from possible showers over the east and northeast. Hot, humid and mostly sunny weather on Saturday. Just the chance of an early shower over the northeast. And on Sunday, very hot. New Norfolk expecting 38, Hobart 36 and Launceston 35. Showers developing over the west before extending eastwards later. Warm and sunny for Perth and Adelaide tomorrow. Partly cloudy for Melbourne, Canberra, Sydney and Brisbane. And rain for Darwin. Partly cloudy and 21 in Hobart, 25 right now in Launceston and 22 in Devonport with the expected heat wave over the next couple of days. Joe, we're advising all Tasmanian residents that they should take reasonable steps to remove all chocolate biscuits from the cupboard and put them in the fridge. <laughs> or just eat them before they melt. <laughs> Thanks so much for that, Merv. That's all from the team for now. Thanks so much for your company. We'll see you a little bit later. Bye-bye.